Hello everybody, we're back with another weekly video and this time it's not really a tutorial but it's just in response to a lot of questions that I get. I get asked about the tools that I use. Uh, specifically, a lot of times it's my text editor, which is Vim. Um, but there are some other tools that I want to use and I'll bring up just to kind of show you in general what my workflow looks like for a lot of different things, even though you might not see all of it in the tutorials that I do because I try to keep it as simple as possible for the sake of somebody who doesn't know all of the tools that I'm using. So the first thing that I use uh, and that everybody really cares about here is Vim is my standard text editor, but I have been using NeoVim as a variation of that for about a year now. And NeoVim is kind of a rewrite of Vim, um, trying to take away some of the legacy aspects of Vim and replace some parts with things just to make it more maintainable in the future and a little bit more extendable. Um, some of the big things out of the box that you've seen already are the fact that there's a terminal emulator built into it. So you can boot up a terminal right inside of Vim. And that happens when I run my tests quite often. So that's uh, pretty neat. And that's kind of my standard tool. And with this, uh, a lot of people want to see my configuration for it. So I took my personal dot files and I brought them up to speed, even though I haven't used this repo in a few years. But um, this is the init.vim that I use for this. And then that this is just a new file name for NeoVim specifically. But if you use a dot vimrc, you can actually have NeoVim work off that too. And right at the top here, I load in all of the plugins that I care about. Uh, so a lot of these are pretty small, but some of the really cool ones that I use and that are super important to me are Control P, which you've seen me use before when I open something and I kick open this uh, file browser, which lets me kind of search things. Like, so if I want to get the kill port, which is a command that I have, uh, I can use KP and it's a fuzzy file finder. That's one of my main ones. Uh, Vim test is another really cool one that allows me to not have to worry about what uh, testing normally happens in a given language. If I hit my normal testing uh, command, which in my case is leader T, it will try its best to figure out what kind of language I'm in and run the tests accordingly. And it does a pretty good job. Uh, we're running into a little bit of issues with this with React because it's trying to use Jest, but Jest is kind of hidden behind the scenes in the React scripts for us. So it's having some issues there. And I think I might extend it to work with that. A lot of these are language plugins and uh, a lot of these are just Tim Pope plugins, uh, like commentary, which is for quickly uh, making something a comment. Um, so these are just kind of standard. There's not a whole lot going on here. My theme is Dracula, if you've ever cared about the color scheme that I use. Uh, and then some of the more interesting ones that I use are up here. We have Deoplete, which is the thing that allows me to have asynchronous completion of commands that I'm working off of. So occasionally you'll see a drawer open up with like some autocomplete suggestions for me. That's Deoplete. And if I'm working in a language that is statically typed or um, basically just compiles down and it can find its own information, then I can get some really, really useful stuff for that. So if I'm working in Go, it can try to autocomplete based on the package name that I'm currently using and giving me the public functions that are on that package or on that struct. And then paired with that, Alchemist uh, runs a server in the background that allows me to do that with Elixir modules and showing me the function signatures that I have access to. That's about it for the Vim aspects here. The rest of this is just configuration. And I try my best to comment things. Um, and there's a lot of, they're segmented. That's what these uh, little squiggly brackets are. So they should all be folded if you first look at this. Hopefully that's useful to somebody. And I will have links to all this in the video's description. But you'll notice that to load all these things in here, we're using plug and then this name here. That is a package manager called Vim plug which allows you to install all of this stuff uh, with a single command really from inside of them. And it goes off and fetches these things in parallel. So beyond my text editor, the next probably most frequently used thing that I have is going to be Tmux, which uh, I try not to use this in tutorials because it gets confusing sometimes, but Tmux allows you to split a terminal into multiple panes. So if I create a new session here, I can use uh, the prefix command here and I can split this and then I can switch back and forth. So normally I would have Vim open up top and uh, just a shell underneath that I would interact with all the time. And then you can also have multiple windows. So you can create a new window and over here I would run my server and then I can bounce back and forth between these things. And it's not using tabs in the actual terminal. It's using a multiplexed situation, which the one reason that this is cool is because I can bail out on it 
and then I can actually reattach it. So I can completely kill iTerm, but then later on I could come back and attach to that same thing. So I have some aliases for this, so I guess we'll just, um, I'll show you what that is. So when I type the word attach, it runs tmux attach session, and then I give it a name. So I'm gonna attach to test, and it's gonna get me right back to where I was. And all the processes that we're running in here will continue to run on my machine. So. If I want to get rid of that, I will just kill it, which this is TMK is Tmux kill session, but that's not super important for you. That's a really important tool for me though, is I really like having that. And then the thing that I use on top of that is called Tmux P. Some people use Tmuxinator, they do very similar things, but it allows me to specify what I want my configuration to be so I can have multiple windows and multiple panes inside of those windows that run predefined commands and I don't have to worry about it every day. So I like to uh, clean my work area after I'm done. And then the next day when I come back and I want to start working on a project, I reboot it up using Tmux P and everything is back where I want it to be. So writing code is actually a pretty small part about being a developer. So the other tools that I have here um, are going to be Dash, which is a Mac app for searching documentation. Um, it's really cool. You can load in doc sets and then you can search them specifically. So uh, if I'm working in Elixir, I can say Elixir, oh, I need to look at the map and what does get look like. And I can go and it'll find me all of the method signatures for that. And it also lets you break these things down in terms of guides too. So I can say, okay, Elixir has some stuff. Oh, it also has some guides. That's cool. What do behaviors do? and I can go through and read these docs really fast. And these are offline, so they're completely downloaded to my machine. So if I'm gonna take this to the beach, not sure why I would take my Mac to the beach, but if I wanted to do this uh, working from a hammock somewhere and I didn't have any internet, I could still actually work off of these things. So Dash is really important to my workflow. Additionally, it's not uncommon to have to search for things within your code base. For that, I use the Silver Searcher. The alternatives to this were gonna be Grep, which I use Grep pretty frequently uh, in the tutorials just because I know it's on most systems that I'm going to be running things on, but you would normally go with something like ACK and uh, a few years back the AG, the Silver Searcher came out and it's uh, comparable to ACK, but it's fewer letters is one of their selling points, which I think is kind of funny, but I've just been using this for years, but it makes it really simple to find text inside of large projects very fast. And lastly, the big tool that I've used in almost all of my projects for the last couple of years now is going to be Docker, but everybody already knows this because I've created a ton of Docker content on the channel. But this is about it. So I use Vim, Tmux, uh, and then my assorted tools for looking at documentation and searching through text. There are obviously going to be some other things in there, and I write my own tools for a lot of different things, but these are my main tools. So if you have any questions about these things or you want to know more or you want me to point you to some resources for some of these tools, just let me know. And if you really want to know more about this stuff, I can maybe create some tutorials in the future about this. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, be sure to leave a comment down below telling me why you liked it and what you're going to do with this knowledge. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can get more of these tutorials each week. And also don't forget to join us on Patreon, Facebook, Slack, so you can keep the chat going and on Twitter. But as always, have a nice week.